Today we're making Victorian Christmas ornaments. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first ornament will be a butterfly ornament. So I've got some brushed gold paint and a brush here and I have a little resin butterfly. I'm going to put some of that paint down and then kind of get it up into the bristles but I don't want a lot on here so this is almost going to be sort of like a dry brush technique but you're going to put more paint on there than that. This is almost like you would be using a wax. When you use a wax you know how it looks kind of you want it to be down in the deeper areas and you want the higher pieces to be a little bit lighter colored. That's kind of the technique I was going for in this. I'm going to push down in all of those little cracks and crevices. I'm going to go around the edges too to get some good coverage on here. Now you can add as much as you like. You can do a little bit less, whichever way you like it. I'm going to take a paper towel and ball it up really, really well to make it soft and squishy. And I'm just going to gently wipe off the higher areas there. So you see how it's down in those cracks and it looks aged. Now my son decided to get in on the action here and to do a little helping. It's usually his sister who is helping me, but he is going to be my assistant for this video. So if you love what he's doing here, you could give him a thumbs up and I know he would appreciate it. And of course it helps my channel too. So he's doing the same thing I did. He's a little bit heavier handed than I was, but you'll see it makes a difference. And it's actually helpful here in case you decide you want to do more or less, whichever look you're going for. So now he's got the towel and he's wiping off all the extra and you can see that my side's a little bit lighter than his, but both sides are perfectly okay. Now the body of the butterfly needs to be painted, so I'm going to do a little bit heavier, leave a little bit more on the body of the butterfly. Be sure that you go around all your sides. Now maybe you don't have one of these butterflies, then what do you do? Well. Dollar Tree has paper butterflies in green, in yellow, in orange, in hot pink. They have a variety. It doesn't have to be something that's plastic or resin. This is just what I had on hand, so this is what I wanted to use. Now this is a, it's a little paper Christmas ornament, but it's more of a cardboard type thickness. And I'm using some trim here just to go around the edge. Now this is the back side. Both sides of this little ornament are exactly the same, but I'm going to put this on the back side so that it will be trim when we flip it over for the front. I'm going to go along the curves and contours of this little ornament. And this is how it'll look on the front. I'm going to go all the way around except where her little legs and feet are. So it's going to go all the way around the edges of her dress and of her body and then can be trimmed off. You could use tinsel or whatever you have for this and you can use a cutout. So now this little angel will be right in the middle of the butterfly. Almost like she has two layers of wings. Little hot glue will hold this angel down to the body of the butterfly. So actually I didn't have to paint it at all if I didn't want to. Could have saved my paint. Then I'm going to take a little bit of gold cord and go right on the back of the angel ornament so that we have a hanger. Now if you do have one of these little resin pieces, you can find, I find these all the time hummingbirds and swallows and ducks. I find them all the time at the Goodwill store. If you have one and you want to take the screw off where it attaches to the wall, you can go ahead and do that. Mine wasn't on hand, so I left it. This is how she is going to look. What else do you think you could use on the back of this ornament for the same kind of look? The next ornament is going to be a topper ornament. Now I named it a topper because this is a candle topper. I have a variety here and if you don't have these, this little blossom sign from Dollar Tree is exactly the same size. I'm going to use this one. If you're going to use it and it's been on a candle, get all the wax off, clean it up really good, both sides. I have a little piece of, this is scrapbook paper actually, 
and it's in a little pad. You can get these at Michael's and Hobby Lobby. I think you could get them at Target too. Mine was thrifted. I'm going to cut it out to the right size for the bigger diameter circle because this is going to be a two-sided ornament. I love to use my glue stick for these kind of projects. It, it dries quickly, it grips quickly. It's just easy to work with. Then I'm gonna take my squeegee after I push it down with my hands and just work from the inside outward. Then we're gonna flip it over and on the back side, I'm going to brush some of that gold on there and putting this gold over the dark wood is going to make it almost look like a bronzed color and I really like the way it turned out when it was dry. I'm gonna take some gold ribbon and go right around the edge. It's a, it's a little bit thicker than the thickness of that part of the candle topper, but you know, it'll work. And if you are using one of those Dollar Tree pieces, little um, springtime ornaments, which they're in the garden section, if I didn't mention that, you don't have to worry about that. You can just go around the entire outside edge with this if you would like, any type of trim you want. I think the gold is good for Victorian, so that's why I used it. And this is a gold that's very similar to the gold paint that I've been using for my Victorian decorations, so I think it works well. Now I'm going to use an emery board here. I got mine at Dollar Tree. You can use a sanding block or a piece of sand paper or a finger sander, and just go ahead and shear off the edges so you get a nice, clean, finished look. And then it will just peel away. Now this. I got thrifting. I think maybe it was a candy box. Maybe? What do you think this was? I'm thinking maybe it had candy in it. I'm going to cut out the figure of the little girl. I think she is so precious. And I will use her on this side of the ornament. She's holding her dolly. She's got little bare feet. She's so cute. And I'm just gonna add her down on this side. And I'm gonna add greenery because you know I always do. And I love this piece. They, there's just some scraps that I've had left from my Christmas and winter decor from a couple of years. I always save that stuff in a bag and it works great on these smaller projects. I'll hold it down in the hot glue then I'm gonna use a shorter one right here so that we have like a semicircle on this side. And then we can use little beads and or push pins or um, whatever you have as little ornaments here. If you have little crystals or little rhinestones, you could use those if you wanted to. But I think these little pearl beads work great. And I know that you can get pearl beads at the Dollar Tree in Crafter Square. So I have a little gold looking ball ornament. Uh, it was in a pick, a floral pick, and I'm just going to cut one side off so that I can glue this flat and it won't be quite as thick. I don't want anything to overwhelm the piece, so I'm just going to glue that in the middle. And then I decided to add maybe just a few more of those little pearls. Now we're going to flip it over down the back side. This was also in a paper pack. I'm gonna trim off a couple of these tags. One of them has sheet music on it and the other one just has some Christmas verbiage on it. I will cut those out to the right dimensions, cut all the white off. If you wanna put a little staple or something or a little tack in here, which I originally thought maybe I would do, you can use a stick or a piece of wire and make a hole in the center so you can go through both of them. But I just decided to not do it that way. For one reason, the candle lid was very, very hard. So I couldn't push a thumbtack through it. So I decided to just glue it down like this instead and then make it look as though it is tacked down. I wanna put a little bend in my papers for a little dimension and interest. And I think it looks cute there. And since we had ornaments well, since I had ornaments left over that were kind of old looking and the same sort of gold look, I thought they would look really good on here with the sheet music. So I'm just going to add the little harps and the violin to the ornament, just on the side there. 
I could have gone completely nuts. And y'all know, I know I've been accused of going overboard and just doing way too much before, but I don't think it's too much on here. I think it's interesting and it's different. I like it. So now it needs a hanger. I'm gonna take another piece of the gold ribbon that we used to frame it out on the edges and I'm just going to loop it over and make a little knot right in the end and that is going to be our hanger. I'm trying to slide that knot down as far as I can, leaving a little bit of slack so that I have something to glue to the trim. I'm making sure that this is exactly opposite of the front so that nothing's crooked when it's hanging up on either side adding it with some hot glue and then I'll add a little more hot glue so that I can put a bow on this side. I did it upside down but it won't be upside down. So this is how it's going to look on the front and then if you flip it over this is how it will look on the back. The next ornament is a spool ornament. I do have some vintage spools but I do not know where I put them at this particular moment because I have all my Christmas crafting supplies out. So, take a spool, some paper cutouts, some rhinestones, some ribbons, whatever you have, and something that looks like a little Christmas tree. You can use the little bottle brush Christmas trees if you want to. I'm gonna take a little of this satin ribbon from Dollar Tree, just get my measurements on there, and then I'm going to hot glue the center of it. I've seen lots of these little ornament trees on Pinterest, so if you're curious, um, maybe you don't like the way I did mine or you want more ideas, then you can go to Pinterest and look that up. You can find my Pinterest board in the description box in case you want to go over there and look. Lots of good ideas over there for you. So now we got that glued down and I'm going to take some of this red and gold and go upside down right over the top. Same process here, we're gonna add a little bit of glue, but I wanna add the glue only where the red is on that ribbon so that it doesn't squish out and make a big mess. I'm gonna trim it down, make it nice and neat, and so this will be the base of our little Christmas tree and ornament. So on these picks from Dollar Tree, the ends of them have little, they look like little trees. So I thought that'd be a great idea for a tree and I've used it in other decorations for my other Victorian decorations as well. So you just got some versatility from those fern picks. I'm taking two little signs, a little pick left over from, I believe some florals that I had. I'm going to first glue down the stick in here. I'll roll it over into the glue. Then I'm gonna add some more glue and glue them together. Now the way I cut these out was exactly how they were on the paper, but I have to trim the wider one down. That's easy enough to do. Could have done it in the beginning, but you can always do it after you have it glued together. So I pressed it down so that it kind of locked it in and that stick's not going anywhere. And this is how it looks on both sides. I'll trim that off on the back of the other one so that they are the same size. Got a little Victorian lady there. These little beads or whatever this is sticker beads i think they came from dollar tree i know you can get something similar at michael's or dollar tree so just watch your sales get your best discounts where you can save you a little money when you can and then just decided to put this one on the top and the other one is on the bottom it's just a matter of preference if you don't like the way i do it all you have to do is change it up i'm not here to tell you what to do i'm here to give you ideas and then you can make it your own so far, this is how the spool is looking. I think it is very cute. I am going to add a chrysanthemum right on the top. And then I need to add a little something on the back because if it rotates on the tree, which it may, we need to have it looking nice. So I'm gonna make a little shepherd's hook here, which is also gonna be the hanger. This is a copper looking piece of wire. I'm just gonna bend over the top part of it. And then I'll take some table scatter from Dollar Tree and I will add on some of these little styrofoam table scatter pieces. So I have a gold, a white, and a silver. And that's how it looks. Pretty simple. You can do it so many different ways. It will hang nicely from that little hook. 
The next ornament is going to be a card ornament. Recently on a live video with my friends Crafting Cousins and Annie from Indiana Jones Crafts, we had um, we made some ornaments and so I wanted to duplicate it duplicate sort of the ornament that I did so that you guys could see it and that you can make one of your own. So you can see the supplies so far that I've gathered together. I've got a card here. I'm just going to kind of uh, press that center down and peel it apart. Now I have one. I'm going to use my glue stick, flip it over on top of my foam board, but you can use cardstock or something else if you want. It needs to be fairly thick though if you're gonna put a trim or a border on it. You gotta have something to glue to. I'm just going to place it down, press it down with my hands, and don't worry about that purple glue. It vanishes when it dries, so no worries about that. Doesn't make a mess at all. I'm going to press it down so it is nice and neat with no wrinkles, no bubbles, and so that it will look like we bought it this way. Now you're welcome to use scissors on cardstock, and it works pretty easy, but if you use something like this, like this thick foam board, it's going to work better, in my opinion, if you use a utility knife. You gotta be super careful. I don't use a wooden ruler here, I use only the metal. And keep your fingers out of the way as far as you can. I'm gonna go around the edges protecting my card until I get it all cut out and now it is a solid piece. Which allows us some room to add on some decorative trim. Now this trim is not a rope. Somebody told me that you don't use rope in Victorian decor and this is not rope, this is a cord. So I'm going to use this green, red, and gold cord along the edges. I think it looks very rich and regal. And I'm gonna use it all the way around to trim it out. It'll sit right down between the layers of paper because right in between is like a um, styrofoam or something. And so it sits in there nicely. Once you get to the end, if you're using this type of cording, you can just twist it with your fingers to lock the layers together and press it down. That'll give you a nice, nice little finish. Then, before we start the back side of this card, which is reversible, we're gonna add some ribbon with some hot glue. Let it dry and cool. Then we're gonna flip it back over and continue with the front side. I wanna add some of these snowy picks. It's the same little snowy pick um, that we used for the other ornament. And I'm gonna add it to the card because the cardinal here is sitting in a, a tree, in a pine tree with pine cones and lots of snow. So I thought it was appropriate. I'm also going to add some gold by clipping off pieces of that fern and putting it here and there. Can you see how making these ornaments can just really help you use up those scraps? I mean, I'm just picking apart pieces here and putting them together. Simple. It brings in the gold from the the frame around the outside and it looks great. So now you can take another piece of paper. I dropped my glue stick. I have no idea where it rolled, but it is gone. So I'm using some double stick tape. This will just give you an option of another way that you can do it if you don't have a glue stick because not everybody keeps them on hand, but I have children in my house. So we always have them in hand. Then I'm gonna press it down so that the Adhesive from the tape is clinging on to that paper. And I think it looks nice. It looks sort of like a postcard. I have some more of these ornaments. These are gold and I found these at the same time that I found the angels from my other Victorian video. I'm gonna cut off the hangers and the little loops there on the top and decide where I wanna put these cute little stockings. So these are gonna be Santa's boogie shoes. Y'all remember that song? Yep. They're stockings, but these are Santa, Santa's boogie shoes. I'm gonna put them on here, make them look like they're dancing or leaping in the air. Then I'll take some of this beautiful red trim. You see how easy it is to make that bow? So super simple. A little bit of red twine, and I'm gonna put it around the middle because this red will kind of blend in. And you could leave it like this, you could leave the bow like this rather than having to cover up the center unless you just want to because I do end up covering the center of mine, just FYI. I'm gonna pull down the tails and pull up, kind of fluff up the ears or the loops of the bow. I know now where I wanna put it and I'm just gonna trim off my sides so that they don't overhang the outside. 
adding a little glue, put it in the corner. And it's just a little bit of overhang there and that is totally okay. Then I'm gonna take this little gold button looking thingy and just glue it down on top. Now we have a two-sided ornament and this is very similar to the one that I made in the live video. It is November Subscriber Appreciation Month and it's time for me to give back and I have been, right? Freeze this frame, read the rules, and good luck. So now we are going to do a frame ornament. Now, this one is vellum, and it is just glued to the back of an empty frame. That's all you have to do to it. I'm gonna cut out some ribbon that's 18 inches, but if you don't have this type of frame, you're gonna just alter your ribbon to what you are using. All we're gonna be doing is making a bow on the front. This is pretty simple. If you don't have little holes in your frame, then you can take a, um, you can just glue it right to the front. Instead of attaching it by the little area here, you can just make your bow and just glue it right on the front. But since there was a space for it, I decided I would leave it there. I wanna take just a moment to thank everyone who has subscribed to this channel. Watching, liking, commenting, sharing, all of those good things help show YouTube that I'm doing good work here and that people are enjoying the work that I'm doing. So I appreciate it when you do those things. If you're new to the channel, welcome. It's budget friendly all the way on this channel and I am happy that you stopped by. So now we're gonna trim the tails up here, get those out of the way a little bit. I'm gonna take an angel ornament. This is just one of those paper cardboard type ornaments here. I'm gonna cut the hanger off and place her where I want her and then put just a little bit of that hot glue there. Um, for your information, I am using Gorilla Glue on my projects and I have been for a while now. I'm trying to put like the tiniest amount so I don't make a mess on this frame and because I can use this frame again if I'm careful with it. Look at here. I can just bend that ribbon in the other direction by just gently pulling it against the back of my scissors. That's a good little trick. It doesn't work with all ribbon, but it did, it did work on this one. So you can see through the back of the vellum. So when you put it next to the Christmas tree, you'll see the lights through it. We're gonna make a hanger. And the way I did mine was just to feed it through where the bow was, then double it back on itself with just a tiny bit. I'm just barely smearing any glue on there so I don't burn myself. Then I'm going to twist it back under there and then I'll add a little bit of glue to hold it in place. This is not heavy, by the way. This is not a heavy frame at all. I wanted to add just a little bit something else up here, but if I would have had the right type of a stone, I probably would have put some fake jewels or something there. But I think this is precious. She'd also look good if this was on a stand in front of a candle, I think. Here are the five ornaments that we did. Now these are strictly inspired. I'm showing you my ideas. These are not supposed to be authentic. These are not supposed to be true to the period or anything like that. We have a reversible card ornament, the frame ornament, the topper ornament, which is also reversible, the butterfly, and then we have the spool. So you're really kind of getting seven because here's the back of one of them. I can't even decide which one of these are my favorite. But I think they're all really cute and I think that they would look good on a Victorian tree. What do you think? Do you think these would be okay? Now I'm gonna show you the back of this one. There's Santa's boogie shoes. Thank you so much for stopping by. I believe in you. It's time to get crafty. Go out and find some joy in your day. Bye.